So the coffee's good, but these things are amazing. So we don't have a morning dive this morning. It is actually go uh, walk with the Komodo dragon. So that'll be fun. And then three dives. So while obviously the scuba diving is the main attraction out here, there are Komodo dragons on the islands and they are enough of a unique thing that they actually take us off the boat in a dinghy so we can go walk around and see them up close. So they have these guides who are responsible for making sure no tourists are attacked by any Komodo dragons and they carry these sticks and apparently if the Komodo attacks the stick is enough to stop the dragon. I was highly amused by the fact they had a whole shotgun rack of sticks sitting off to the side. Once we had our group together they took us off walking on this short loop, showed us a Komodo dragon nest which was not currently occupied and we got to see just some of the forest environment. The guides were on the lookout for Komodo dragons, but they weren't cooperating, so they ended up taking us up this overlook area. Soon after, one of the guides signaled that he'd found one, and everybody rushed over to take pictures. Now, the Komodo dragon in question was sitting inside of a bush, so it wasn't the most impressive sight in the world. Not long after that, they did find one relaxing out on the rocks, which was a little more photogenic. And after everyone had their fill of cell phone pictures, it was a short walk back to where we'd entered, which of course had a uh, shopping area that we had to run the gauntlet through. Amusingly enough, after all the trouble finding a Komodo dragon, when we reached the dock, there was one sitting right there. At that point, the nature guide started directing everybody back behind the dragon so they could take their pictures. So, of course, we did that. And after that, it was back to the boat for a hearty breakfast, and then it was time to get diving. And since the dive this morning specializes in turtles, I'm going to let Taters narrate this one. You guys will do a dive shot called Siaba Bizarre. Siaba is the name of the island. Uh, sort of like the turtle capital. So I think some of you want to see the turtle. Yeah. Uh, it, it is really sad if you guys don't see a turtle here. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, Taters here. I'm taking over this video. We started out on the sand fighting these little rocks and check out how bubbly those bubble tip anemones are. The fish in there are the Clark's anemone fish, not clownfish, though they're just as cute. And I love how they hide in the bubble tip anemones. This guy, he's gonna totally disappear in the bubbly bubble tips. There he goes. Oh. We quickly left the sand and went over to the reef proper. And of course we were probably greeted by huge schools of fish like this. I started looking for turtles right away. And this was a pretty shallow dive. Like Angela said, we're just at 36 feet. Matt got more awesome footage of this huge anemone with those super cute Clark's anemone fishes. And there's a little tiny wrasse or something hanging out with them too. Found a super vivid black spot puffer. Love the way these guys swim, even if they're not quite as cute as like the porcupine variation. The mandarin fish are super hard to find. Remember last time the other dive guys were kind of joking with Angela about being able to find one. Turtles on the other hand, these are something I can actually find. So I actually found the first two turtles on this dive.
There were tons of these fox face fish all over this reef. Super cute. Turtle number two. And turtle number three. Just chilling out on the coral. Don't they know that stuff's delicate? There were some really big anemones all over this reef. Check out how many little fish are in there. Thanks for catching this adorable family on video, Matt. I could watch these guys all day. Needlefish, I think. Kind of weird looking. The scale of the corals here were amazing, both with the individual corals, which were enormous, and the reef that just went on and on. Matt found a cool giant clam in with the corals. Love their vivid colors. Aw, he just needed a little scratch. We weren't quite sure what was going on here at first. It kind of looks like the big fish were eating the catfish because they're kind of hurting it. Uh, but we found out later they just like to follow because then the catfish will stir up things from the sand that they can eat. Most of the turtles that we saw were just sitting around on the corals. So it's always a special treat when you get to see them actually swimming. By this point, we had lost count of the turtles. So many turtles. With the shallow, clear water and the beautiful reef with all the turtles, this spot is unsurprisingly a popular snorkel spot. So we saw a lot of snorkelers winging their legs at the surface as we came up. Both of us were really reluctant to come up at the end of this dive. It was just so magical underwater. We spent every last second of our 70 minutes, I think, looking around. She notices she'll mug for it, but. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly, Taters was run over by the boat. From the moment we got off the dinghy, we could feel a pretty strong current pulling us. 
We started off kicking hard so that we could stay together and get down to the reef. You can see all the fish having to work against the current too. Once we got down into the stream, we were able to just relax and go with the flow. The drift dives on this trip were probably my favorites overall because I just love that feeling of getting pushed by the current, you can kind of play in the current a little bit, and just relax and enjoy the ride. Matt actually passed me the camera for a bit here so that he can relax. No troubles, just bubbles. You're supposed to try to stay behind the dive guide, but that got kind of tough on this dive, so like you can see here, we pretty much all are in front of him a little bit. When you're drifting along the reef this fast, you don't really have time to stop and look for little critters. You don't even really have time to sit and appreciate the clownfish playing in their anemone for a while. So it's more about seeing things in passing and appreciating the overall scenery. At one point we passed a big green turtle sitting in the corals. I saw the dive guide sign for it and looked around for it and by the time I saw it we were already 20 meters past it or so. You can see how fast we're moving here. It was an absolutely amazing experience to get the feeling of flying over such a gorgeous underwater landscape. In just a minute here, you're gonna see the clear blue water start to mix with some murkier green water. That's because we were getting to the front of the island where the currents from either side of the island start to mix. So from one side of the island, you have the clear blue cold Pacific water. And then from the other side, you have a little murkier, greener, warmer um, water from the Indian Ocean. Once we hit that green water, it unfortunately ended the nice relaxing drift portion of our dive at just about 20 minutes. We came to an abrupt halt and promptly realized that the other two dive groups were stuck in that same spot. We had to stay right in that transitional zone because either direction had current that was pushing against us. K2, of course, took the opportunity to point out some cool fish and critters for us. But the dive at this point was feeling tough. We were having to keep kicking around against a current that kept switching. Ooh, fox face pair. And the visibility was low enough that it was hard to see each other, much less any cool critters. I was just laughing to myself at this point because the dive briefing description was very easy, very beautiful. And this last part of the dive was not so much. Look at the water color change right behind you. On the surface, you could actually see a difference in color where the two currents were coming together. <laughs> Seven bintangs does that to a person. <laughs> The merchant ship showed up again and I started joking that it was because Taters had bought the expensive scuba statue. Basically they were all on the lookout for the lady spending money. Matt and I were both really excited that tonight's night dive was going to be on a reef rather than in the sand. Although you can see really cool critters in both places, there's something just eerie and magical about being on the reef at night. <laughs> We are around this part here. This is the island. We dropped in and right away had extensive views of the reef. All kinds of fish, different kinds of fish that are out. Ooh, porcupine puffer. I love these guys. Yeah, different kinds of fish that are out during the daytime. The reef is pretty steeply sloped and we were diving along the side of it. So there was plenty to see both above and below you at any given point. One of the critters this reef is known for is the Spanish dancer Nudibranch which is a huge nudibranch up to like 40 centimeters, 
bright orange or pink or sometimes a mix. So we all had our eyes peeled looking to see who would spot the first one. I was super excited when I found this first Spanish dancer up high on the wall. This really captures that eerie, magical experience of being on the reef after dark. Everywhere you shine that spotlight, there is so much movement around and under the corals. That's a cool view of a big Spanish dancer slithering along the seafloor. And there goes Matt blinding me with his light again. At least I got in a cool pose. These feather stars are always mesmerizing how they move, but they're light sensitive, so they would curl up whenever we got them in the spotlight. This was one where we couldn't quite tell what Kechit was signaling underwater, but once we got up top, he explained there's actually a ton of eggs in every one of those little folds. Another Spanish dancer. Matt passed me the camera again here, so I got to capture him enjoying himself going around looking for critters. Look at those calves. Wow. Near the end of the dive, one of the other groups swam over to alert us to the presence of a frogfish. These are really cute little fish that are really unique looking and pretty hard to pick out. So it's always really exciting whenever you can spot one. Aw, sailfin tang. We had one of those in our aquarium. And that little black and orange thing that looks like a free-swimming nudie is actually a little batfish. This was another dive where we could have happily stayed underwater for several more hours and just enjoyed the reef. But when our 60 minutes was up, it was time to go back up to the surface and back to the boat, where at least they had some post-dive hot cocoa for us. Cheers. 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 Cheers.